David Sinclair has finally responded to the uproar surrounding the FDA ban of NMN and his company's attempt at cornering the market. Was it the mea culpa we've been hoping for? Welcome to House of Longevity, your source for the latest in the longevity and anti-aging fields. Let's get into it. Let me set the table for those who are unclear on the details. Six weeks ago, several letters between the FDA and supplement makers and between the FDA and a drug research company co-founded by David Sinclair started receiving a lot of attention. The attention was because it basically banned the sale of NMN as a nutritional supplement. NMN, or nicotinamide mononucleotide, for those who don't know, boosts the production and availability of NAD, nicotinamine adenine dinucleotide, a molecule that supplies energy to the cells. NAD also protects our DNA as we age and helps maintain our circadian rhythm. For those and other reasons, it's been a hugely popular anti-aging supplement since natural NAD production diminishes significantly as we age. So where was I? Right, David Sinclair. For years now, David Sinclair, a well-known and well-respected anti-aging researcher, has been touting the benefits of various supplements, including and especially NMN in recent years. In 2017, he co-founded Metro Biotech, a privately owned clinical stage pharmaceutical company. Much of the company's focus has been on NAD plus therapies, so it should be no surprise that as soon as they entered clinical stage trials of their version of NMN called MIB626, Metro Biotech would try to eliminate the competition by requesting protection under the provision that NMN was being investigated as a new drug. So the FDA complied and rejected supplement makers who requested official permission to market and sell NMN as a nutritional supplement. The hornet's nest had officially been poked. And David Sinclair said nothing. Twitter went crazy with criticism of his silence and equated it with complicity and guilt until December 15th. That's when David finally spoke about, well, tweeted about the controversy. Here's what he finally said. I am deeply grateful for your patience while I've gathered information to share with you about the impact of this decision. It's slightly tone deaf if you ask me. He continues, I know many of you are worried about what this means about the safety of NMN and the possible limitation to the availability of NMN supplements. I don't think anyone who has ever heard him talk about NMN or who has used it has been worried about its safety. This is misdirection in my opinion by mentioning safety as though people don't know that the ban was based solely on protecting one company over all others. While NAD boosters such as NMN have become popular as supplements, in part because of my research, nice little humble brag thrown in, I am not and have not been involved as an owner, co-founder, investor, shareholder, marketer, spokesperson, or sponsor of any company that sells NAD boosters as supplements. So here we have him distancing himself from all the hype he has personally given NMN over the last few years and trying to convince everyone that he never considered NMN a health supplement. The FDA's decision was preceded by a letter from Metro Biotech, a company I co-founded but do not manage or control. Well, he is the chair of the company's scientific advisory board, so... Pointing out that the company had begun clinical trials with a special crystalline form of NMN that is stable and made under FDA drug standards. This right here makes me think the supplement makers have a case for continuing to sell NMN. In the letter to the FDA in December 2021, they stated that Metro is the sole source of MIB-626, Metro's proprietary form of beta nicotinamide mononucleotide, which is authorized for investigation as a new drug and for which substantial clinical investigations have been instituted. If they are the sole source of this proprietary blend, then it is obviously different from the NMN being sold as a supplement. So why the ban if it isn't the same thing? Then he goes on to defend the FDA decision based on his reading of the law. The FDA's letter was based on the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, which states the term dietary supplement does not include an article authorized for investigation as a new drug. In other words, if a clinical trial of a substance has been initiated, it cannot be classified as a dietary supplement. 
In its action, the FDA is in line with its own regulations, which do not allow for the authorization of a substance to be classified as a dietary supplement if it has already been cleared by the FDA for clinical trials. Next, he goes back to cheering on the research of NAD boosters and the prospect of age reversal, etc., etc., bringing it back around to Metrobiotech's research into treating Friedrich's ataxia, a rare neurodegenerative disorder. He links clinical trial results of Metrobiotech's research to further solidify his case for his company to control NMN for the foreseeable future. Next comes the gaslighting. The important work of bringing NMN to market as an FDA-approved medication is in the best interest of the tens of millions of people who suffer from and will succumb to aging-related diseases. Basically, he's saying NMN should be a prescription medication and it should be way more expensive and our doctors should be the ones deciding if we can buy it. Cynical? Maybe. Maybe not. Next, he blows more sunshine up our skirts by talking about how great and trustworthy the FDA is and that regulation and oversight from such an esteemed organization is necessary to protect ourselves from ourselves. Then he tries to give users of NMN as a supplement a ray of hope by saying that N-acetylcysteine, NAC, is now both a supplement and a prescribed medicine. So maybe. Finally, he ends his thread and attached letter by assuring us that advancing the health and well-being of everyone who could potentially benefit from scientific curiosity and discovery will continue to be my highest priority. My take is that he tried to thread the needle between being an advocate for us regular users of NMN and his desire to get a drug on the market that will yield billions in revenues. He failed pretty miserably in my opinion. Remember, David Sinclair is the one who discovered much of what we know about resveratrol's benefits. Then he sold his company, Sertris Pharmaceuticals, which was working on resveratrol as a sirtuin activator, to GlaxoSmithKline in 2008 for $720 million. Don't be surprised if Metro Biotech is sold for billions a few years from now. The next time he starts hyping a specific molecule the way he did with resveratrol and NMN, know that there is likely a money incentive in it for him. Leave a comment below if you think the supplement makers have a loophole with the FDA based on Metro's letter stating that they are the only source of their proprietary blend of NMN. And hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.